it's our third anniversary. Three years ago tonight, we met. Oh, that is serious. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I forgot. Happy anniversary. Hi, everyone. It's Plastic EP here from Melbourne, Australia, of course. And let me tell you, it's not every day that you get to interview Hollywood stars. And one of the biggest is Christine DeBell. How are you today, Christine? I am great. How are you today? I'm feeling groovy. Now, let me tell everybody about some of your movies that you've done right. In 1978, you did a movie called I Want to Hold Your Hand, which is really great for Beatles fans out there because this will go out to all the Beatle groups. Then also, yeah. you did the movie Meatballs, which was huge. Everybody has seen the Meatballs movies. So that's another fantastic, great one. Then you got the Cheerleaders Wild Weekend. I saw previews from that. I've previously seen it. I mean, what a fun movie that was. Then you've yep. also done Samurai Cop 2 Deadly Vengeance. And yep. you did one in 2017, The Holy Terror. And you've done a lot of movies. But I just want to ask you, being a Hollywood actress, I'm just saying, how did you actually get your start? Because there's a lot of women out there and girls that may want to get into the Hollywood scene. Have you got any advice for them? Well, I, I would say that my Hollywood start was, uh, it was so much easier, I think, when I started than it is today right? You kind of have to know someone or have a connection. But I was modeling in New York for Eileen Ford and ended up stumbling on a film and ended up in Los Angeles. And yeah, the rest is history. But what an amazing story because you come from a farm and then you yeah. make your way there to the agency, which is one of the top agencies in the world. And from there, you go to acting. To me, that's an unbelievable story. I know. And actually how it worked was I was modeling in in Albany for Macy's back then and wanted, you know, I didn't fit in. Right. I was really thin. And back in the 70s, girls were really curvy. And so I thought, oh, I should be a model because I'm very thin. And um, or, you know, whatever. I thought that would be a fun thing. And yes, I did grow up on a farm. Right. But I was just two hours north of New York City. So when I graduated from high school, I went to um, New York and uh, well, there was a little college in there for a short time. But I went to New York and I walked into Eileen Ford's office and said, she said, well, and who are you and why are you here? And I said, I'd like to be a model. And Five minutes later, I was sitting across from Eileen Ford. I mean, that I don't think that happens today. No, but also got to say, you're very cute. Okay, like I've seen the movies. So what I'm saying is you had a lot going for it that you may not have known, but you just fell into the movies. And when they saw you in the movies, you just basically portrayed the characters fantastic and you uplift the movie. I've noticed that with your character, you're always upbeat. You know, in these kind of films, and that's what makes the films, because people are bored. So when they see someone <laughs> upbeat, it sort of makes their day and their movie. That, that's yeah. a big deal. I don't think that's a small uh, thing. I think that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, I had done theatre right before I did four years of summer stock theater. So I was sort of a singer as well, but I never actually got to sing in a movie, but okay. But yeah, no, thank you so much. I mean, acting came very naturally, but then I studied of course with Milton Kinsellis and other amazing teachers. And uh, yeah, the rest was history. That's history. Now, let me tell you, I really want to zone in now on, I want to hold your hand right. An executive producer was Steven Spielberg. So that's really huge there. After having seen that movie about five times in my lifetime, I love it because it's three girls or four girls, right? They want to meet the Beatles. And at the end, they're under the bed and you see the Beatle boots. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. there's was a movie a that didn't cost movie. any money to do that scene. No, it was, it was Robert Zemeckis' directorial debut, right? Yeah. And it was such a cute movie. And Steven Spielberg was on set and I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. Can you just tell me what that was like when you got that part and when you actually was doing the filming? I just want to know more about it, doing this Beatle movie and the hype 
before it got released, if you can tell me. Well, the th- you know, the thing is, is oftentimes as an actor, you don't know. It's like you audition and then you get the part and you're on set. And at that time, I almost, because he was just starting out, didn't know what a big deal it was to be on set with Ro- with Spielberg or Zemeckis. You know what I mean? And you just sort of do your part and then you're like, wow, this is great. And sometimes you don't find out till after when it comes out and people are like, oh my God. Gosh, I love this movie, right? And then you're like, oh, cool. Yeah, I was in that. <laughs> but see, that brought back 1964. That brought, brought back the Beatlemania to people on the screen. And you know the great thing now, Christine, it's 2022 and people can stream these movies now. They don't have to go to a cinema to see it. In other words, what I'm trying to say is you're a pioneer in these movies at the right time. And now people are realizing. The movies that you made are totally entertaining for these times now in 2022. Right. People have so much more access to older films now, right? It's like, you know, you that wasn't like that. I mean, and let, before, you know, Netflix or Amazon started buying content, you know, if you didn't see it in 1981, you would, weren't going to see it. And like, oh, no, I take that back. You could buy a DVD. But, you know, oftentimes people didn't do that or they were only buying their favorites or their genre. And it it, it opened up a huge window for people and for, you know, actors. But the great thing now, Netflix might have 350 million subscribers, right? When you think of that, whatever's shown there, people find it. Then you've got these other streaming platforms and people find it. All they do is type in the name of the movie or your name. Bang, they see all the movies you made and they go, let's have a look at this one or that one. Everyone's got freedom of choice now. There's so much happening more at home entertainment than there is out there in the cinema now. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like now you make a choice. Do I want to go see it in the theater or do I just want to sit home and make popcorn and watch it? I mean, some films, yes, action movies, you kind of want to be in the the theater. Like, you know, we're Marvel nuts. So anytime a new Marvel film comes out, we kind of want to see it in the theater. But other than that, it's like, ah, let's stay home and watch, uh, you know, with popcorn at home. Now, I've got to ask you about Meatballs because that's a top movie, right? And it had such a following. Those Meatball movies are so great. And to be on that one there, I mean, that's the first one, isn't it? Yes, the first one. Yeah, the classic one. The others got a little raunchier, I must say, right? They were a little raunchy. But ours was so sweet and, you know, with uh, the, the... you know what they did is Ivan went back in because at some point the script, well, Bill, the crazy stories about Bill, you know, coming on set and then it's all improvisation, which I loved, right? But I, they realized at some point that it's the relationship with, his, with you know, his character and the Rudy character that we're going to make the film. So they went, they, they added a lot of scenes with that. So, yeah. But that's an amazing movie. And from there, it's like the scene because kids are growing up, going into adulthood. And now these new generations of fans that are students or whatever, they got more time on their hands and they're going back into the past to watch these great movies. So basically what I'm saying is you're playing classics. Even that cheerleaders wild weekend, I saw it. That's a bit raunchy too. But for the time. Yes. But for the time, it's great because it's capturing that time. What you were saying was about the time, right? I mean, it's really true. And the 70s was sort of like that. It was one of those films back then that would be shown on late night television when only the adults were awake, right? Exactly. Now, I want to ask with your aspirations, right, through your career, if you look back, is there any actor that you would have liked to have... um, been in one of their movies or is there anything that you think, oh, I wish this had changed in my career? Is there anything that sort of you'd like to just mention? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, uh, you know, I grew up on a farm, as you said. I love to ride horses. I was always like, I never got to make a Western. I never got to 
like I'm a big fantasy adventure fan and I never got to be in that kind of movie. So yeah, there were things that I, you know, kind of wish, oh man, but you know, hey, my career was what it was and it was, you know, a lot of fun. Now, listen, you played with Richard Gere in his first movie. That's true, isn't it? Yep. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Tell me about that. It was pretty amazing. I mean, of course, I didn't know what was going to, I just, it was, it, it, one of the coolest things with Paul Servino, who just passed, um, he sang opera on set. So that was, you know, all these like, you know, studied, you know, New York actors that had come from the theater, Paul Servino, they were, you know, it was, it was, who was the, the director? I mean, he, the director, I can't think of his name. I'd have to look it up, but he did like To Kill a Mockingbird. I mean, but you know what I'm saying? This all happens in retrospect. I didn't know at the time that I was working with this amazing director. I didn't know what he, you know, he would become or, at, you know, I'm meaning the, um, his first film. You don't know these things. Again, you're just on set and you're doing your part and you're doing, you know, trying to do the best you can. Richard Gere, yeah, he's a cutie. You know, this is a fascinating interview for me because it's so real. You know, just having this nice discussion about your film career and talking, it's just like, to me, you know, a really great interview and this is one of those interviews. And I just want to say, if you want to say anything to your fans around the world, Christine, just say whatever you like. Because as I said, the world does love you and they love the movies that you've done. Well, I mean, I guess I would just say thank you so much for being a fan, right? Let me just tell you something. The first time I did a show where you sign autographs, it was the Hollywood show. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I mean, that's like what people that aren't working anymore do. But I, they're like, oh, come on, you know, you'll make some cash, whatever. So I do the show. And I had no idea. I mean, I would get a fan letter, you know, some thing where a guy would say, like, I wish I knew where you lived. I'd like to sit on your roof or jump off your roof when you came. I was like, ah. But I did not know that many of my films had become classics. So I go to this thing. People are driving from Oregon and they're flying in from pits all over the country. And I was like, wait, what? I have fans? So it was only doing the Hollywood show that I found out I had fans. I'll say the Meatball movies would have turned up a lot of crazy fans. You know, that's great. Oh, the, when I did the second, I did um, some show where uh, you can dress in character, which escapes me right now, but I, the Halloween show. He's going to kill me for not remembering, but who cares? Anyway, people came dressed in costumes from Meatballs. Is that nuts? They came in costume. Yeah, but you're part of you're part of the scene, you know. If you didn't go, you wouldn't have known. And this is why every day, twenty four seven, people are catching up with the movies that you played in, and your name's out there. I mean, as I said, there's no bigger accolade than that. Even if you don't know exactly what's going on out there in the world, but it's happening. That's that's the yeah. impact that you had at that time. That's what's really amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. It is because, you know, I mean, maybe I was, I mean, obviously I was a little naive. Maybe people who had been in the business longer knew. I mean, I knew I had fans, but I just, it is, it's just, it. it's so heartwarming to know that all these people loved the work that you did. Yeah, Christine, I want to thank you so much for being on this interview. And as I said, Plastic EP salutes you. And I'll be watching these movies <laughs> over the next week, right? Thank you so much for having me on. No, and it's... To Australia. It's been a pleasure, but not only that, it'll go to all the Beatle fans and other fans. And you know what? Having a Hollywood starlet like yourself, to me, is just so fantastic because you see it, the movies, you dream them, you learn them, you, meet, you see the actors... And it inspires you because it takes you away from the doom and gloom that we've got at the moment going around the world where people need to be cheered up. And these movies are upbeat, happy, and just like the grooviest movies of their time. That's what makes it so cool. Well, it's a, it's escapism, right? We all yeah. want to be in that dark room and, and, you know, be taken away to wherever that the film is happening or who's in it. Yeah, I get it. Absolutely. 
Thanks again, Christine. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure. Mm -hmm. We love you. Thank you.